I'm not gonna bury the lead, guys. Karma is the guy on the Chiefs, part two. Hello and welcome to A Quick Look, a pop culture show while I'll be taking you through the biggest headlines in entertainment and current events. I'm Zoe Jewell and today, this is a Taylor Swift special. Now, that's not to say that our other shows are not Taylor Swift specials because let's be honest, the majority of our content thus far has been about Taylor Swift, but there truly is no bigger star on the planet. There's no bigger story on the planet than what is going on with Taylor Swift right now. And today we just have to break down her first night in Sydney, her first concert, which included, yes, Travis Kelsey. A new song was announced for her new album, Katy Perry, Rita Ora, Taika Waititi. There's so much to get into. Let's jump right in. Okay, first things first, we have to break down everything Travis Kelsey related. We knew he was gonna be at the concert. He obviously touched down in Australia on Thursday. They went to the zoo, they had their fun. Night one, Sydney, Travis is there with his bestie, Ross. We already explained who Ross is yesterday. They're both in matching sets, which I loved. Travis in blue, Ross in yellow. They weren't the same set, but I love that they were both in their own individual matching sets. It was, in my mind, it was giving Mary-Kate and Ashley, right? Like you and your best friend dressing in one color, but you're kind of still sort of matching in a way. It was very cute. I just love how much Travis Kelsey loves being a Taylor Swift fan. And yes, I mean fan. He doesn't act like a boyfriend when he watches her on stage. He acts like a genuine fan. His hands are up, he's bopping, he's singing, he's dancing. It's, it's incredible, it's amazing. And going through all the videos that the fans have posted of Travis reacting to certain songs, he clearly loves Reputation and 1989. Those, I, I think he's mentioned 1989 was his favorite album prior to dating Taylor Swift. But I think he's also a big reputation guy. I feel like that fits his vibe. It was just, it's, it's great. I, I highly recommend, if you haven't done it already, go on Instagram, go on social media, find the videos of Travis reacting to the different songs in the concert. It's well, it's well worth your time if you're a Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey fan. The big question on everyone's lips was, what are Taylor Swift's surprise songs going to be? Again, if you're a Swifty, you know this, every concert Taylor will do two surprise songs that are not in the official set list. And she changes them up concert to concert. And typically she will kind of like, she'll say something with her song choices. For example, when Travis was at the first concert that he went to back in, well, not first, I guess the first as her boyfriend back in Argentina, one of her surprise songs was Endgame, which has a lot of references to sports in the, in the song and also about how these two people have these big reputations um, and they're like known for these different things and they come and find each other. Anyway, it was very much a Taylor or a Travis coded song. It, she, she was playing it because of Travis. So people were thinking, what's she going to perform? Okay. Well, the first one she does is a mashup. She's very into the, into the mashups these days, a mashup of White Horse from her album Fearless with Coney Island, which is an interesting mashup. Now this doesn't have like a direct correlation to Travis Kelsey, but there is a line in White Horse where she sings, I'm gonna find someone someday who might actually treat me well. And so I wonder if this is <clears throat> her kind of like singing to her exes about how now she's found Travis. I might be reading too far into it, but that's kind of what I deduced. The second song though that she did was a clear reference to Travis because that song was How You Get The Girl. I don't have to explain anything more. Even if you don't know what that song is, just the title, How You Get the Girl, tells you everything you need to know. It's about a man who tries to win over Taylor, a woman, um, and all the ways in which he can get her to fall in love with him. Um, obviously, Travis <laughs> did a lot of things to get Taylor's attention, making the friendship bracelet, the podcast moment. So this was definitely a reference to Taylor Swift. I think she then, I think we all expected it. She 
the first show that Travis was at again as her boyfriend in Argentina, Taylor obviously saying, Karma is the guy on the Chiefs. She changed the words around. She then went back in subsequent um, concerts. She, she went back to the original lyrics, but all the fans, I mean, every concert video we've seen since she first made that change, all the fans sing Karma is the guy on the Chiefs uh, instead of Karma is the guy on the screen. Well, Travis back in attendance, she changes the words again to Karma is the guy on the Chiefs. And I think we all just need to, I want to put out like a, um, a petition to Taylor to just permanently change, change the words. I think, I think we can do it now. Let's just make it Karma is the guy on the Chiefs. I don't think we need Karma is the guy on the screen anymore. And I would like to put forth this permanent change um, because it's just more fun to sing that than screen. Um, she then, starts, again, so much happening, so much happening. She then announced, so she's announced two different versions of her upcoming new album, The Tortured Poets Department. Um, each, each version with a new or a different bonus track. The first edition that she announced has the bonus song, The Manuscript. The second version has the song, The Bolter. And now this third edition that she's announced has the bonus song called The Albatross. Now, it's a big word. What is The Albatross? What does Albatross mean? Well, here is the definition. I have it for you. Albatross, a person who causes you great problems from which you cannot escape, or they prevent you from doing what you want to do. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so that, again, I mean, we've said this before, this is going to be a Joe Alwyn, or at least I think it's going to be a Joe Alwyn breakup album. She's talked a lot about how she felt like she was sort of locked away, maybe weren't her exact words, but she felt like she was in hiding for six years, that she didn't really show her face. She was she was in private. Joe clearly never wanted to be in public. He, de he definitely didn't want to talk about his relationship. And so in the definition they prevent you from doing what you want to do. It makes me feel like, and I'm inferring here, I'm speculating, but it makes me think that she was in a relationship where she maybe wanted to be more public. She wanted to go out with friends and have a more public life and just live her life. But because she was in a relationship with somebody who didn't want that, she then had to basically change who she was for this person. Now this is interesting too the the announcement of this third of, the, of this third version because a lot of people have been inferring and claiming that these different versions that she's going to release five different versions to represent the five stages of grief. And it's interesting too each version has like a slightly different shade of like a almost like a tan gray color which people think represent the five different stages of grief, which are obviously um, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. So like the first song, the first edition, the manuscript as the bonus track uh, might represent denial. The second, the bolter, anger. And this third one, the albatross, is the bargaining. I'll be curious to see what if she announces two more versions. Um, I think it's an interesting... I think it's a it's an interesting theory, and, and and it's one that I think Taylor Swift would do, um, especially going through a, a breakup. Like I think most people who've gone through a big one, especially when you've been with someone for six years, you do experience all those stages of grief. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what the other two albums, if she announces two different versions of the album, if that feels like it might be a depression acceptance additions, but we'll find out. Um, Katy Perry was there. <laughs> which isn't super shocking, but also kind of shocking. Um, it's a big deal, I guess, for those who remember back in 2013, 2014, Katie and Taylor were not friends. There was serious beef. Um, there was accusations of stealing backup dancers from one another, just not... It wasn't good between them. The song Bad Blood, which is on the 1989 album, was allegedly, but also like pretty much confirmed to be about Katy Perry, about how they 
used to be friends and now they have this bad blood between them. But they did make up, uh, I would say back in like the lover era, 2018, 2019, Katie was actually in Taylor's um, music video for You Need to Calm Down, I believe. She was she was at, there at the very end. I think Taylor sent Katy Perry like a gift when she had her baby. Like they definitely made up. There's been no beef over the last maybe five years or so. Um, but it is nice to see them hanging out. Um, Katie actually filmed herself while Taylor was singing <laughs> Bad Blood, which is kind of funny. I bet she can laugh about it now. Uh, and then Katie also shared this r very sweet photo of her and Taylor together post-show, which love to see it. Rita Ora was also there with her husband, Taiko Waititi, which was, I mean, not super shocking um, because I think they actually live in Sydney, but also fun. And also just in that VIP tent to see Travis Kelsey hanging out with Rita Ora and Katy Perry. It's like, I would have never put these people in a room together, but there we are. Um, and then of course, at the very end, you know, we, we did get our Taylor Travis post, post concert kiss, I suppose, her coming off backstage behind the, the stage into Travis, hugging. It, it wasn't as dramatic as the Argentina show post-concert kiss, but it's always nice to see. Um, and I'm very curious to see if Travis goes to the next three shows, because she has three more shows in Sydney, and that's a lot of shows to go to. Um, I mean, obviously, I would love to go to four Taylor Swift shows back to back to back, but I'll be curious to see if he does or if he maybe like dips in, dips out. Um, will he stick around for her Singapore shows next week? We'll have to wait and see. Um, but I'm sure we'll get so many more fun little things to discuss in next week's show. On Monday, I guess we'll have two more shows to discuss or three. I guess we'll have all three um, to, to, to break down. So we'll give you the highlights, all that fun stuff. Please let me know in the comments how you felt about this concert, about the surprise songs, Travis, Katie, all the things. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.